order of uh, reading the disclosure. Yep, you got it. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 <coughs> order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL 30A, Section 18, in the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing oh, strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. The meeting of the Servage Board of Selectmen will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation can be found on the town's website, www.sturbridge.gov slash town administrator, how to access virtual meeting. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen and or watch the meeting either online via the town's on-demand video broadcast on cable television on channel 191 or dial into the meeting at 774-304-1455, enter 1428 pound for the meeting number and 12345 for the access code. This phone number is only active for the public during public meetings. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Okay, thank you, Jason. We won't have to do it much longer. No. Okay, good evening and welcome to the May 17th, 2021 Board of Selectmen's meeting. On the agenda this evening, we have Pledge of Allegiance. Could we please stand for that? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next we have public service announcement. Chase, do you have any? Mary? No. Ian? I have none. Jamie? Uh, no. I just want to um, let the town's folks know that there's no Memorial Day parade this year. However, there will be services at three of the cemeteries on Memorial Day, 8.30 at St. Anne Cemetery, 9.30 at the Old North Cemetery, and 10.30 at Town Hall. And they... Uh, Legion has requested that people wear masks if they do attend. Okay, can we please have a moment of silence now for those affected by the COVID? Okay, thank you. Okay, on the agenda tonight at 6.35, we have a public hearing on Sawdust Coffee House Inc. for an amendment on their alteration to premise for their liquor license. Then we have a review of the 2021 annual town meeting warrants and the special town meeting. We have department reports, police department, town administrator. We have several action items, consideration and possible action on carry. Gary, sorry, Ashambo is a part-time custodian. Consideration and possible action on a contractor for partial lobby renovation at the public safety complex. Consideration and possible action on elevator vendor for town buildings. Consideration and possible action on Parker and Peddler license for Robert Scott of Trinity Solar. Consideration and possible action on the retirement of Lieutenant John Marinelli from the fire department. Consideration and possible action on a temporary dock permit for 104 Westwood Drive. Consideration and possible action on a temporary dock permit for 132 Lane 9. Consideration and possible action on change of manager on liquor license for Hamilton Rod and Gun Club. Consideration and possible action on the approval of a banner to go on Joshua Hyde Library. 
consideration and possible action on a common victual license for Manny's Tagarias at 559 Main Street, consideration and possible action on transient vendor application for New England Antique Arms Society Antique Show, consideration and possible action on common victual license for Stone and Sparrow at 559 Main Street, consideration and possible action on the confirmation of Nicholas Matarosian as police officer with the Sturbridge Police Department, consideration and possible action on a revised use of force policy for the Sturbridge Police Department, consideration and possible action on correction to rate of pay for Tyler Gusterson in the Department of Public Works, consideration and possible action on approval of wine vendors for the Sturbridge Farmers Market, consideration and possible action on authorizing the resurfacing of the tennis pickleball ball courts, consideration and possible action on the installation of lighting protection on the radio tower at the public safety complex. Next, we have old business under that COVID-19 update, review closed center office building, discussion of equestrian park bylaw, then we have new business, correspondence, approval of minutes, citizens forum, and then we adjourn. Chase, do you have the uh, public notice? Yes. Yep. Uh, notification is hereby given that the application has been filed by Sawdust Coffee House Inc. for an alteration of premises on their liquor license at the premises currently located at 371 Main Street, Sturbridge, Mass., with the Sturbridge Board of Selectmen. In accordance with MGLCH 138, a public hearing will be held on Monday, May 17, 2021, at 6.35 p.m. This hearing will be held virtually. The Sturbridge Board of Sele Selectmen elect consistent with Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A20, to hold the public hearing virtually. Details regarding how to virtually access a meeting can be found here at sturbridge.gov slash town administrator slash pages, how to access virtual meeting. Okay, does uh, anybody have any question on the application? Do we have a spokesperson here from the establishment? Yep, I'm on the line. It's Pete Champagne. Oh, hi, Pete. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. We, would you just give a little explanation for the audience at home, please? Yep, it's just I have a um, fenced-in patio that seats 24 people outside. Um, just being able to serve alcohol out there on the, uh, from the establishment, um, strictly in the patio area only. It's got two gates on it. Um, <clears throat> that's really about it. Yeah. And it has accent access from the main building, right? Yep. There's a door that comes right out from the, um, coffee house, goes onto the patio. Right. And we all have pictures of what is there now. And we also have a memorandum from Jean Bouban who does not see any problem with it whatsoever. Does anyone on the board have any questions or comments? No questions or comments? I just have a comment okay. that I think it it's a good it's good that we'll be able to serve outside. I think a lot of people enjoy being outdoors in the summertime. As long as the weather stays nice. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Okay, Jeff, it is a public hearing, so do we have any call-ins? public line that would like to speak to the public hearing for Sawdust Coffee House. Is there anyone on the public line that would like to speak to the public hearing on the Sawdust Coffee House? Public line. Yes, there's, is there a caller on the line?
There's no one to speak to the public hearing. Okay. Okay, is there a motion then to close the public hearing? I'll move to close the public hearing. I'll is there second. a second? I'll second the motion. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Okay, five to one. Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda, we have a review of the 2021 annual town meeting warrants and the special town meeting warrants. We do have a few changes, right, Jeff? Wait a minute, we're working We were on voting it. to close the public hearing. Yeah, that's and Then it. we have to vote for the license. We have to vote on the license. Because I don't vote on oh! the You abstain. No, we didn't do that yet. <laughs> yep, okay. I'm trying to get over with it quickly. Okay, <laughs> okay just making sure. <laughs> do we have a motion then to approve the request for expansion of premises? So move, Chase. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, that's five to nothing. It's a okay. four, four zero and one, one abstention. That's right. Yes. Sorry, Ian, I always good. forget. <laughs> it's a good thing you're an honest man. <laughs> okay, next we do have review of the 2021 annual town meeting and special town meeting warrants. Jeff, we have a few changes. Yes, um, Article 5, Article 19, and Article 32 were all adjusted. Okay, now the um, annual town meeting has to be posted seven days, so we can reopen it tonight just to adjust those changes and then close it immediately. It's a special town meeting that has to be posted for 14 days. So is there a motion then to open the warrant for the annual town meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Okay, all those in favor? Okay, now which number, Jeff, again? Number five, the number CPC five. report, or excuse me, number five, the Community Preservation, Community Wide Historic Preservation Plan. Uh, the Historic Commission asked CPC to increase their allocation to 20,000 from the original 15. Um, Finance Committee approved that last week. CPC approved it the week before, and we're asking the Board of Selectmen to concur with the $20,000 allocation from the Community Preservation Committee. Okay, is there a motion to approve the $20,000? Uh, I'll move to approve the $20,000. <clears> is <throat> there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Okay, and the next one is number 19, the supporting the tax rate. We uh, have gotten guidance on the use of the new federal stimulus dollars, which will allow the town to use those dollars to replace the money lost due to COVID uh, restrictions on the economy. Uh, depending on how we conduct the formula, it could either be a, t a loss of 1.2 million or somewhere around the $900,000 range, but we have to work our way through the formula that's in the final rule. But we know that the 850,000 plus that originally we used in the budget development of free cash to balance the budget is no longer necessary since we have the new federal dollars, but we left this article open until we got that guidance so we are now recommending four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to offset the tax rate and this is a okay is there a motion this is free cash not the federal stimulus dollars yeah. is there a motion then to approve the dollar amount of four hundred fifty thousand dollars so moved is there a second second discussion I just uh, all in favor. We, we have a question from Jamie. Yes. Yeah, so this is just this, go, this oh. 450,000 is just going reduced down because you're going to be able to have funds from somewhere else. This is just stabilizing money. Uh, th the board has a history of using free cash to kind of keep the tax rate low 
yeah. or lower than it would be otherwise. Okay. Uh, historically, that's been 350. Last year, it was increased to 450. Uh, eventually, with the COVID budget, it was 550, but that was an extreme circumstance to keep the, any potential tax increase flat. Um, so we're back to 450. Okay. Yeah, I just have a comp. I just wanted to add to that. So we do. Can you? Yeah, I just wanted to add to his question, uh, just a little background. So we have a financial um, policy. You should get a copy of it. And we always stay, it's very conservative. We always stay within a certain percentage of the budget available in free cash. And so we never take so much that we affect that policy. But I just want to ask. Um, have a great time, honey. I know I ask this every year, so I just want to ask Jeff and Barbara to, to, to let us know, based on that policy, what percentage of the budget are we giving to, um, if we give 450000 Because I know when we increased at 100000 we could easily do it and stay within that 9 to 15% or something like that. And I just want to know where we fall. It's Barbara, are you on? I am. You don't have to tell um, me tonight. Oh, I didn't know you Yeah, I don't, have, I don't have that tonight. But what I did uh, figure for you, because I thought this would be asked, is it's going to be approximately 33 cents off of the tax rate at the 450000 Okay, that's even a different question than what I'm asking. I, I know. Oh, okay. I know. Okay. I, so I, I guess know. I anticipated that question and not yours. <laughs> Yeah, right, because that was one of the reasons we were able to go up from 350. You know, at one point we were doing 250, then we went to 350, and now 450. And I just want to see if, you know, there's any wiggle room to maybe go to five. So just whenever you can send it to us would be helpful. Yeah, sure. And, and I would just add to that that we, we just want to be very careful in the amount of money that we use from free cash. Uh -huh. um, going forward, because I believe that as we close um, the fiscal 21 budget, we might find ourselves not having as healthy a free cash as we have been accustomed to just because of, as Jeff said, where the, the effects that COVID has had on the economy. Uh, this will drop us to below $3 million, so $2,973,000 in free cash. And we started the year at 4.3 million. So we have used a considerable amount. And, you know, I, I just wanted to point that out. For oh, no, you I to, understand. To keep but mind. we've always fallen yeah, I just, within the yeah. policy. And if we need to change the policy to even have more. But for the last few years, we've had more free cash than, you know, my position that some of it should have been going back to, the, to tax rate relief. And I'm glad we increased it because 4.3 was a lot like we've in the past had less than that and we've still been within that conservative range so i just just if we have those figures it would be helpful did we vote no, no we didn't vote. all set on that yes Hey, all in favor of the $450,000 number? Okay, five to nothing. Is that it for the articles, Jeff? Uh, final one is Article 32, which is the easement on 77 Far Far Road. The surveyor in the town council kind of tweaked that one a little bit, really just added some language and cleaned it up a bit so it's more explanatory. Uh, we separated the map out. Um, it's it's kind of a difficult story to tell in a brief synopsis, but um, we did tweak it a little bit. Nothing material, but it is changed. Okay. Hey, any questions on that? Okay. Is there a motion then to approve the change in Article 32? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Okay, is there a motion then to close the warrant for the annual town meeting? I'll make the motion to close the warrant for the annual town meeting. Is there a second? Yep, second. <clears throat> Discussion? All those in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Barbara, okay, next. Oh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. 
Barbara, was there anything on the special town meeting warrant we had to address? No, it was just those three articles. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Okay, You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Department reports, police department. Chief Jazert. Good evening, how are you? Good, and you, thanks. Good, thanks. So, um, I'll start with March's report. Um, nothing of significance, business as usual. We did start, we were able to get out there uh, March 9th and do uh, one of our first community policing initiatives that we've been able to do in a while, which was the coffee with a cop held over at the Sturbridge Coffee House. And I wanted to just thank the coffee house for letting us, uh, for hosting that for us. And it was a great partnership with the Massachusetts State Police. We did it together and it was very successful. Um, we're starting to get some uh, training where we're actually going to training and not being in on the Zoom meetings, which is nice. And um, any questions on March? Any questions from the board? No. No. In April, um, we did a distracted driving campaign. You know, uh, as you see out there all the time, we were just talking, I was talking to the district attorney today about getting some more programs about people texting and driving. Uh, so we did a distracted driving campaign over uh, April. As you can see, some of the numbers from March and April are starting to increase as things start to open and people start going out. Um, another significant training that we did have, we had, as you know, we promoted Sar uh, Sergeant Murray and she was a school resource officer. So we also uh, sent uh, Officer Philip Derry to school resource officer uh, school during the month of April so he can start uh, at Burgess, which he has started. But other than that, still business as usual there. Any questions on that? Any questions from the board? Chief, I assume in April the um, motor vehicle citations are up quite a bit from last year, but as you say, that's because more people are out on the road now, right? Yeah, well, you know, in April, yes, there's more people out on the road. That's part of it. But we also we applied for a grant through the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security. And we, we got extra money to put special patrols out to uh, look for distracted driving. So when they're out there um, just designated to that, you see an increase in, in the citations there, citations or warnings. Okay, and I noticed a few problems with uh, catalytic converters being stolen. Yeah, it's a state. It's statewide. Um, it's a statewide problem right now, and we're we're trying to stay focused on that. We've had a few businesses hit where they can get a lot of them at one time, and uh, we send in, we're sending officers off to basically uh, to meet with other departments throughout the area so we can share intel and hopefully catch the people who are doing it at some point. Okay, anything else for the chief from the board? I just had a quick question. Okay, Mary. Okay, um, chief, under the business and house checks, they did go up maybe 100. Were you doing more house checks on the elderly um, with the whole pandemic thing? How did that work? Did you get a list well, of people from the senior center to check on or? Yeah, well, we got the house check program. So if somebody's anybody's leaving town, they want to call us, um, they can call us and we'll go check on their house while they're on vacation. But I think what happened for this increase, just my guess on this is uh, the other proactive activity was down during the pandemic. So the officers were out hitting the neighborhoods doing all, a lot more checks because they, they weren't uh, exposing themselves to uh, COVID-19 on traffic stops and Whatnot. So what they were doing there, uh, they were focusing more on the business checks and other things where they didn't have to have uh, contact with individuals. So I think that's why you see the increase in the numbers. Okay. Okay. Anything else for us, Chief? Uh, th that's it for this for for now for my my report. Yep. I just, I just got a few other things. I, Thank you on the report. Mary, I had a You're quick uh, idea, and I didn't know, I didn't want to speak for the rest of the board or the chief, but it, it might be nice if we sent the Sturbridge Copy House a thank you letter for hosting that event from the Board of Selectmen and the, and the chief. I didn't know how the rest of the board felt about that. Part of 
that sounds good. It's always nice to show appreciation for what local businesses do for the community. And they're particularly generous. I mean, I'm a regular, not that I get my coffee for free, but um, I know that they also, veterans and um, uh, first responders, law enforcement, also can get free coffee as well on a regular basis. So yep. they're very community oriented. I don't know if you've ever taken advantage of it, Chief, but I always see the sign when I go every morning. I see the, if you're a veteran or a first responder, you get a free coffee. You put a free I have coffee. not, but I do know they are. Uh, oh, yeah, has right. been extremely supportive of us uh, in any initiatives that we have, but she is uh, very, very uh, friendly to us. And I think that that's a great idea for, for the Board of Selectmen, if that's what you choose to do. Yes. Does the board concur? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we'll get a letter out. Okay, Chase, thank you for the idea. Okay, and Chief again, thanks for the report. Next we have Town Administrator's report. Thank you, uh, my report's in front of you this evening. Just a couple updates. We're still working on a, uh, some additional assistance in the building department. I've been working with the state inspector. He's seeking uh, permission for some of his crew to help us out. So hopefully I have an answer for that in a day or two. Um, the one gentleman we thought we, we would get some additional part-time hours. Uh, the timing didn't work for him due to vacations and other responsibilities. Um, the large warehouse project on 241 Sturbridge Road in Charlton, that has been put on hold. The applicant has uh, suspended their application for now. Um, we'll keep an eye on that to see if that uh, resurfaces at some point in the future. And as I said, we did get guidance on the new batch of funds from the feds. Uh, the fiber optic project where we're connecting all the town buildings to with fiber optics, the cable is installed or the cables run on the poles. We are now working on getting the switches in the building to, to light it up and use it between buildings. And the senior center held a vaccination clinic on Friday, 39 people were vaccinated. There's another clinic uh, on June 4th. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any, any questions? I, Mary? I did. Um, so I didn't read it in detail, but I looked at that interim final rule mm -hmm. that you're working on the formula. I know it's 159 pages, but towards the end, right around pages 139, it has a whole list of authorized uses of the funds. And one of them in particular is um, improvements to the ventilation systems in public buildings. Mm -hmm. So I had already at, um, thought ventilation was one of the things that would be approved and it's actually a specific um, little subparagraph. So I really want to look into improving the ventilation system at the senior center. Um, I know Robin looked at it a little bit, but um, when Burgess requested funding but regardless of what we do with that building, um, right now for the current seniors, they've got the problem in the basement with the mold and- The basement, it's not a ventilation issue. It's a, it's a code issue and it's mm -hmm. a ceiling height issue. I thought it also had some mold. No. 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 Well, I, again, I mean, I, I still want to, it's, it's an old building and I, I want to make sure, because we gave money to Burgess and I'm happy that Burgess is going to have a better ventilation system, but I think it's worthy to look at our senior center and um, make sure that it is, I'm sure it's not state of the art and we now have the funds to do something about it. I mean, I don't know if I, you know, I guess I, I could put it into a motion if you think that's useful, Mary. Well, I think we can add it. Well, let's think about that because if we do choose to renovate that building, we're going to throw away mm -hmm. tax dollars because that won't be reused. Well, this is money. This is money specifically coming from COVID. So, I also feel like if right now we have to we have to live for the moment too. I mean, I don't want to end up giving money back. And then finding out the town gave thumbs down to a $10 million project, and then we could have had a better ventilation system for the seniors, and we didn't move on it. So I, I just would like it looked. At, I would just like it looked into. 
Of course, we'll, we'll see look what at we can do. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else on Jeff's report? Okay, is that it, Jeff? Uh, we did add some additional agenda items uh, that I hope you act on later on this evening. Right, I put them down, I think, under new business. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay, next we have consideration and possible action on Gary Ashimbo as part time custodian. Okay, Jeff, or? Um, yes. Um, Robin has done the background on Mr. Atrembald. He's actually an active uh, custodian at a school in Worcester. Uh, we'd be happy to have him. He has gone through the pre-employment screening, so we'd ask that you uh, approve his appointment this evening. No, no. Okay, hey, any on. questions? Hold on, let me. Gary, are you there? You're muted. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, hello. 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 Does anybody have any questions for Gary? Okay, no question. Somebody want to make a motion then? I'll make the motion to confirm the appointment of Gary Altraball as a part time custodian in the facilities department with a rate of seventeen oh four an hour contingent upon pre employment screening. I'll second that motion. Okay, discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Welcome aboard, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you, people. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Okay, next we have consideration and possible action on a contractor for partial lobby renovation at the public safety complex. Uh, Robin, if you want to take that one, please. Is Robin on? Robin's on. Yeah. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, Hi, Robin. Uh, last year, um, now Chief Dessert um, acquired a grant for a renovation, um, a partial renovation in the public safety lobby. Um, we put the project out to bid, and we only had one uh, respondent for the public bid, uh, E5 Builders. Um, they've met all the criteria of our proposal requests and bid requests. Um, the budget was a little higher um, due to COVID material impacts and shipping impacts and um, the challenges of working within the public safety complex and in the dispatch area. So um, in the memo that was included was the uh, combination of funds that is expected to be used for the project, we did get permission to use additional CARES Act funding to cover uh, the gap that was created between the grant and some capital money that we had for the door replacement and uh, this project. So we'd like to recommend that the board accept the contract with E5 Builders. Okay, any questions from the board? Hey, somebody want to make a motion then? I'll make a motion to authorize the chair to execute the contract with E5 Builders LLC for $49,980 for the partial lobby renovation of the public safety complex. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Okay, next we have consideration and possible action on an elevator vendor for town building. Robin, you want to address that one too? Yes, um, every, um, last year we went out for a one year contract for our elevator vendor that will expire on June 30th of this year. So we went out this year for a three year contract. Um, we had two respondents, Worcester Elevator and Otis Elevator. Otis Elevator, which is the current vendor for this year, um, came in as the apparent low bidder for the three-year contract for elevators for the Senior Center, Town Hall, Center Office, and the Library. And uh, we would like to recommend that that uh, contract be accepted for the next three years. 
Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, someone want to make a motion then? You want to go ahead, Jamie? I'll make the motion to authorize the chair to sign the contract with Otis Elevator for a contract term of three years from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2024. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Okay, ne next. Um, okay, thank you, Robin, on that one. Okay, next we have consideration of possible action on a hawker and peddler license for Robert Scott of Trinity Solar. Mr. Scott has withdrawn his application. He is no longer part of this um, service area for the company. So he's oh. asked that it be, you know, just waived or not acted on. Okay, thank you. Okay, next we have consideration and possible action on the retirement of Lieutenant John Marinelli from the Sturbridge Fire Department. Okay, any comment from the board? I'd like to make a comment. Okay, I, go ahead. Be I would like to thank John for his many, many years of service. He's always um, been very loyal to the town. I think he's done a very good job for the fire department and I wish him um, much happiness and good health um, in his retirement. God's blessings. Okay, any other comments? I just wanted to echo Please. the comments that uh, Selectman Dowling said. John's been really loyal to the town. He's been a great employee for 39 years, and, and I wish him the best of luck moving forward. He's an awesome guy. Okay. John, I believe the entire town feels that way, particularly the people who know you. So does somebody want to make a motion then? I'll make the motion to approve the retirement of Lieutenant John Marinelli of the Sturbridge Fire Department, effective July 24th, 2021, with regrets and best wishes for a safe and healthy retirement. I'll second. Okay, who seconded that? That was me. Jamie. Oh, thank you. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Enjoy the retirement. Okay, next we have consideration and possible action on a temporary dock permit for 104 Westwood Drive. Is there anyone here? Hey, Mr. Uh, Hennigan. There he is. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions? Seems pretty standard, right? The the doc meets all the rules. Conservation had no issues. Um, we recommend approval. Well, I noticed on page two thirty two the sentence there um, says it measures four feet by thirty feet long. We have a maximum length in the water of twenty five feet, though. We noticed that and he has revised his sketch to 25 feet. Oh, okay, because on the sketch it does say 25 feet. Yep. I was just going by the narrative. Yeah. Okay, yep. thank you, Jeff. Thank Any you. other questions or comments from the board? Someone wanna make a motion then? Make a motion to approve the uh, dock permit for Steve Hennigan at 104 Westwood Drive. For a second, I'll second. Ian, okay, discussion. All in favor, five to Ethan. So you all set, Mr. Hennigan. Thank you, members of the board. Enjoy it. Okay, enjoy. Okay, next we have. Uh, Request for a temporary dock permit for 132 lane nine. Okay, does anyone have any question on this one? No questions? Someone wanna make a motion? Sketch of it with measurements or anything. That was my only thing. The other one Yeah, it's- This one doesn't. 
There's, there's well, no sketch the with measurements on this? It's the same 25 foot. Same standard yeah, 25 it's, foot. Um, yeah. It says two sections of yeah. rolling dock. Four each. So a total of 12 feet four. each. Yep. Page 241, Ian. Yep, I see it now. Yeah, so it'd be a total of 24 feet. I was going off of, I was going off of her and her sketch. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, any other questions? Nope. Someone want to make a motion then? I'll make the motion to accept Randy Burkume of 132 Lane 9 temporary dock permit. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, five to nothing. I'm sorry, Randy, I didn't see your name on the board and I see it now, but <laughs> it, it went quickly. <laughs> case okay, next we have consideration of possible action on change of manager on liquor license for Hamilton Rod and Gun Club. Okay, is anyone here from Hamilton Rod and Gun Club? Yes, I am. Lori Jeske representing Hamilton Rod and Gun Club tonight. Okay, do you want to just give a synopsis on switching from who to whom? Yes, um, our previous uh, bar manager, John Riddix, has decided to step down. We've had a fellow member, Larry Bosher, ha who has um, volunteered to take on that position. Um, we are a completely volunteer uh, club, so all positions are held by volunteers. Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, someone want to make a motion then to approve the change of manager to Lawrence Bosher? I'll make a motion to approve the change of manager to Lawrence Bosher. Okay, is there a second? I'll second, Jamie. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, so that's four, one, zero. Okay, thank you, Laurie. Thank you very much. Four, zero, one. Four, zero, one, Mary. Four, zero, one, yes. I got the numbers right, just in the wrong place. At least I don't do it when I go to the bank. <laughs> okay, next on the agenda, we have consideration and possible action on the approval of a banner to go on Joshua Hyde Public Library building. Okay, has everybody read the correspondence? Yes. Is there any question about it? Okay, somebody want to make a motion then? I'll make the motion to approve the banner as requested for the Joshua Hyde Public Library. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to zero. Okay, next we have consideration of possible action on a common victual license for Manny's Tagarias at 559 Main Street. Is anyone here representing? Uh, yes, this is Christopher Cho. Okay. Um, Chris, I just had one uh, question on your application. When it- Yes. Um, days and hours. Right on the same line as days and hours of operation. That's fine. But it says, are you the sole owner? And you say no. But then the next section asks you to, if not, please list the names of all other owners. Okay, let me pull up the application here. There should be one other owner listed. It could be in the corporation section, Mary. So there's there's two people listed in the corporation only section. Oh, see, I've only got the two. But there's not one in the other owners. So if the corporation owns it, it should probably be the corporation who's owning it and then broken up. But I don't think it's outcome determinative. Yeah. Well, but it's not a 
corporation. Uh, well, it says corporation only. Please list the names of the offices. So, Mr. Cho, whose name should be on that, you said? Uh, my name is the, uh, the president of the corporation, and uh, the second owner is Enrique Colbert, uh, the, the name listed under the uh, the corporation portion. Okay. That's so correct, we, yes. Okay, so we do have it. It's just kind of just juxtaposition there. Okay, does the board have any questions? Okay, Christopher, now, you know, people are thrilled to see you coming to town, but they have a lot of questions whether it's going to be a sit down restaurant or, uh, you know, strictly takeout. Could you give us a little update, please? Sure. Um, so basically, we, we've owned the Subway restaurants for about 17 years. And uh, towards the end of the year, we realized it probably wasn't going to be a viable option. So uh, we went through the conversion uh, to a new concept. Um, it's going to be very similar to a Subway. Uh, it is a uh, sort of a, a quick service restaurant where you order at the counter uh, with a majority of the, uh, the businesses to go, uh, but we will have uh, limited seating inside. Okay, and I know people once they heard Mexican, a few drinks popped into their mind, but uh, <laughs> don't have a liquor license. No, at this point, uh, I, I, we want to keep things simple, so uh, we'll avoid the liquor license for now. Right. Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, someone want to make a motion then? I'll make the motion to accept the application for a common victory license for 559 Main Street, Unit 208, Manny Stockeria. I'll second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? K okay, five to nothing. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, I, I I didn't see that. Liz. Still early yet tonight. I was reading it online earlier. <laughs> oh. Tomorrow, tomorrow. If three of you stick around and sign the license. Okay. <laughs> I think I think that's ready to be signed, isn't it, Alex? Yes, it is. I have a few things. I she's going to have it ready, but too bad. But nobody can build out. <laughs> Too bad you couldn't have opened okay. on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> that would have been a good marketing thing, but you know, I'm sure a lot of people do want Mexican, so good. Okay. Okay. Good luck, Mr. Cho. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Next, we have consideration and possible action on transient vendor application for New England Antique Arms Society Antique Show. Does the board have any question on that? I believe Gene Mountain is on the meeting tonight if there's any questions. Okay, I believe we've done this one before. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've, we've set up at the host hotel now for four or five years. Right. So any comments or questions from the board? Hey, somebody want to make a motion? Make a motion to approve the license for New England Antique Arms Society Inc. transient vendor application. I'll second. Is there a second? Ian. Okay, discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, next we have a consideration possible action on common Victor license for Stone and Sparrow. Okay, do we have a representative? Oh, yeah. Can you yes. Okay. Um, does the board have any questions? Any comments then? No. Okay, somebody want to make a motion? I will, okay. Oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Jimmy. That was we awesome. break. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will. I move that we uh, approve uh, the application 
uh, for the Stone and uh, Sparrow Cafe's uh, common victualler license uh, for the premises located at 559 Main Street in town. Thank you. There is a second? I'll second the motion, Ian. Yeah. Discussion? All in favor? A five to nothing. Okay. So you all set now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next we have consideration and possible action on confirmation of Nicholas Matarosian as a police officer with the Sturbridge Police Department. Chief. Good evening again. Uh, tonight I bring forward uh, Nicholas Matarosian. He's a full-time certified police officer. He attended the academy, full-time academy back in 2019. He's a graduate of uh, Worcester State University where he holds a uh, bachelor's degree in criminal justice. He's currently a full-time, uh, he's gonna be leaving West Brookfield Police Department to come over here to Sturbridge. And I would ask that he be, I uh, recommend that he be appointed as police officer. Uh, he has already completed his background pre-employment, everything that he needs to do for us. Uh, I recommend he be started at the uh, starting salary of 2723 and the benefits of a new hire. Okay, Nicholas, do you have anything you'd like to say? Hello everyone, excited to start. I did get married in Sturbridge, so I'm excited to uh, start my roots here and go from there. Oh, sounds good. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Someone want to make a motion? Uh, I'll make the motion to confirm the appointment of Nicholas Maradogian as a police officer with the Sturbridge Police Department, effective May 17th, 2021, at the hourly rate of pay of 27.23. I'll second. Jamie. Discussion? All those in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Congratulations and welcome aboard. Thank you, everyone. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Welcome aboard. See you. Okay. Next, we have discussion and action on a revised use of force policy for the Sturbridge Police Department. Chief? Hi, uh, yeah. Um, this is another update to the use of force uh, policy. We've, what we've done is we've uh, taken our taser policy or use of force policy, combined them together. This was based off a template provided by the Mass Police Chiefs Association. And I may be bringing some stuff back to you as the post commission is formed. There's a lot of changes coming out. Um, just We're just trying to stay current with this. This has gone to town council and it has gone to our collective bargaining union. union and um, this is the policy I'm presenting to you tonight to adopt. Okay, any questions from the board? I do. Mary? Um, Chief, just... Um, could you just go over some of the just the major changes in the policy just for people residents who are watching they may want to know how I know it's to be in compliance with the new state statute but what give us the highlights of, of the new policy the, the biggest the biggest policy upgrade is uh, the duty to intervene and the duty to report I'm so sorry, if a police I, officer I didn't hear that one more time uh, the duty to intervene is the biggest mm -hmm. change that we have where, um, you know, you'd like to think that it'll be common sense, but if you see a police officer doing something wrong, now police officers are required to intervene and make sure that there's not no excessive force happening. Uh, there's a couple other changes too where any misconduct at all, any misconduct, police officers are now required to report that up the chain of command. Uh, those are a couple of the... Uh, major changes and i see some more changes coming down there might be some more mandates as the post commission's formed this is all kind of unfolding um since the beginning of the year and it's starting to come into play now but that that's really the the biggest changes is the duty to, to intervene and report now i'm just there was no duty to intervene in the past or it just wasn't codified like this I mean, it wasn't spelled out clearly okay. um, that says you shall intervene. Right. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that we've already, being an accredited police agency, we're, we're quite a bit ahead of the curve where, where a lot of agencies in the Commonwealth are not. 
because they're not accredited. So we, we do have uh, an advantage. So some of our changes are minor, but it's just to reflect, uh, reflect the, the new changes in the law that are coming out. And we're, we're waiting for the post commission to come down and say, okay, now you're mandated to do X, Y, and Z. So um, we're, we're just trying to keep up with the, all these changes that are being sent to us. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Is there a motion then? I'll make a motion that we adopt the new revised use of force um, as presented this evening for the police department. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? A five to one. Chief, thank you on that, Chief. Thank you. Have a good night. Yes, you Chief. too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have consideration and possible action on the correction to rate of pay for Tyler Gustafson in the Department of Public Works. Yes, Madam Chair and Board of Selectmen members, um, we had the wrong rate of pay in the action item at the last meeting. The correct rate of pay for the employee in this grade should have been 2507. So we ask that you adjust it to 2507 retroactive to May 4th, 2021 for Tyler Gustafson. Okay, questions, comments? Okay, someone want to make a pardon me motion? I'll, I'll make a motion to correct the comp compensation for Tyler Gustafson of the Public Works Department to 2507 retroactive May 1st of 2021. Is there a second? I'll second it. Ian? Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Okay, next we have consideration of possible action on approval of wine vendors. Yes, Madam Mayor and uh, Board of Selectmen, or Madam Chair and Board of Selectmen members, uh, the farmers market has two wine vendors for this year's market: Ragged Hill Cider and Brimfield Winery and Cidery. Um, Ragged Hill has their uh, Department of Ag license already. We're still waiting on final approval for Brimfield Winery and Cidery, but I believe Brimfield was here last year. Yeah. Uh, so. We're requesting approval of those two vendors for the, this year's farmer's market. Any comments from the board? Questions? Okay, somebody want to make a motion? I will. Um, I move to approve Ragged Hill Cider for sales at the farmer mar farmer's market and approve Brimfield Winery and Cidery for sales at the farmer's market con uh, contingent upon the latter's receipt of their Department of Agricultural approval. Yes, you had a couple. They're in here. I'll second that. Public. Okay, discussion. Okay, all in fa favor? Oh. I'm going to abstain. Well, those are for the votes. Okay. Me as well. So that's three. Three, zero, two. Three, zero, two. All right. Thank you. Oh, okay. We have all kinds of projects going on. Oh. Next, we have consideration and possible action on authorizing the resurfacing of the tennis slash pickleball courts. Okay, Robin or Jeff, you want to explain this one? I'll take it. Um, back in 2019, I believe, 2018, 2019, the town uh, rebuilt the tennis and basketball courts, pickleball courts over at uh, Cedar Lake. Uh, unfortunately, at the last moment, the decision was made to move from concrete to asphalt, and the asphalt mix had a mineral in it that reacts negatively in this environment, causing pockmarks and rust spots with the paint. Uh, we've been looking at this for a couple of years and doing test pits with the vendor. Uh, there were no specifications on the asphalt, so we couldn't hold the contractor responsible for the asphalt mix. But we, are, we have agreed back in July of 2019 
to split the cost of any resurfacing that may um, alleviate some of the impacts of the mineral. Um, Mark Agello with the Department of Public Works has been working with the vendors in Lynch to come up with a product. We now believe we have a product that would be effective um, to at least um, slow down the reaction um, over time. So we're requesting that we go ahead and authorize signing of the settlement with Lynch and accepting the quote from Premier uh, for 21-7 to be split 50-50 with Lynch uh, for resurfacing and repainting the courts. Can you any questions from the board? Can someone want to make that motion then? Yeah, I guess I'll make the motion. Um, the, I move to accept the settlement proposal from Premier Seal. Uh, strike that. I think I did the opposite, didn't I? <laughs> I, I, I uh, move to accept the proposal from Premier uh, Seal Coating and Line Stripping for resurfacing of the tennis courts uh, for $21,700 and authorize the chair to sign the settlement agreement uh, with J.H. Lin uh, Lynch and Sons as laid out. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Hey, Ian, did you hand go up? Nope. There's another You abstain it? Right? No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Against? Right? Four. Yeah. Okay. Four to so, <laughs> anyone against the motion? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, the motion does pass, though, four to one. Okay, next we, in the Mary, do you have no, a question? No, I just want to say, I mean, it, it's, a it, it's a fine settlement, the 50-50 split, but it is disappointing that we didn't have specifications, but that Lynch also didn't provide the material that was going to make the tennis courts perform what they are supposed to do, which is withstand playing tennis in whatever weather um, we have in New England. So it is, I, I just hope in the future that we don't make this mistake again. I don't know on, on who, who it is responsible, but I am not pleased with that Lynch didn't stand behind their work, even without the specification that they switched to asphalt from concrete. But I think it, you know, it's a reasonable settlement. We don't want to go to court over it, and so that's why I voted for it. Yeah. But I am disappointed with Lynch Construction um, for okay. not standing well, behind their product, notwithstanding the lack of specifications. I just want to make sure that, that was that was the problem, Mary. If they did what the specifications specified at that time. If there wasn't a definite specification no for the problem that did arise. I it wasn't there. It wasn't their duty to come back and say, hey, you should do this, you should do that. They actually bid on what was presented to them. We did. But it, it, well, it's actually, they, they bid on it, but there were no specifications. We didn't specify asphalt. So I. I we did. We, 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 yeah, we, they, we switched from concrete to asphalt. The original. We did. Said, well, then did. this this is rewarded wrong because the However, I assume due to price, the material was switched to asphalt with no specifications provided on the use of asphalt for a tennis court. The town switched from concrete to asphalt because it was too to expensive. Save money. Save money. Oh, we did. So why does it say with no specifications provided on the use? That we didn't. I guess we didn't provide any spec. We just said use asphalt. Then we hired a paving company to do the work. So Don't hire a paving okay, company. Okay, it just it's worded in a, a confusing way to me, but thank you. I, I didn't. I didn't realize. I thought we didn't specify either way, and they switched. No, we we originally okay. wanted concrete, which is the right way to go on a tennis court. But the and they also didn't. Yeah, and they they bid on what we asked for, I guess, mm -hmm. so. and they didn't provide professional advice. So and it doesn't affect the playability. We didn't. We didn't. Yeah. Design it right either. Well, I understand. That's why it's a 50-50 split. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But. If we were 100% wrong, Lynch wouldn't have agreed to a 50-50 split. So we'll just leave it at that. I voted for it. And okay. 
you just have to be real careful. Okay, next we have old business, COVID-19 update, oh, we got Jeff. one more, we got R. Oh, I already checked it off, so yeah. we're not gonna do it. Gotta... Consideration and possible action on the installation of lighting protection on the radio tower at the public safety complex. Uh, Robin or Jeff? Robin, can you take that one, please? Yes, I'll take that one. Um, so I believe it was in fiscal 2017 as a capital project. Um, I think it was pre flat so the um, fire department requested uh, lightning protection on the radio tower and the radio room at the public safety complex. Um, that is different than what we are putting forward for the current budget round going forward for lightning protection for the building. Um, they, these two projects will complement each other hand in hand. Um, and either way, this is an older capital project that I'd like to um, execute with Goose Town, um, who's been a good communications vendor at the public safety complex and who came in within our capital budget. Okay, any questions, comments? Hey, someone wanna make a motion then? I'll make a motion to approve the quote from Goose Town Communications for $15,460.42 providing lightning protection for the public safety radio tower and radio room. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? Okay, all in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Okay, now old business. COVID update, Jeff. Um, the senior center hosted a vaccination clinic on Friday. Um, this says to one, it actually went to three. They had 39 um, people get vaccinated. It was, was open to 12 year olds and older. Uh, there'll be another one June 4th. Um, we got new, well, the governor put out new orders today stating that over the next, what will be four to five weeks, most restrictions will be lifted and the emergency declaration will be uh, rescinded by mid to late June. Um, so it's good news. Hopefully the caseloads don't go up after the fact, but uh, it seems though normalcy may be returning this summer. Do we know how many younger children took advantage of the clinic, like the 12 year old? Uh, I can find out. I'm just curious. Oh, great job, everybody at the senior center. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, no, Leslie did the work. She's awesome. She's just awesome. That's true. <laughs> She's been doing the legwork to help everybody the whole time. Yeah. Right through the whole pandemic. <laughs> so now, if uh, the restrictions have all been lifted, and our next meeting is going to be two weeks from town meeting, are we back? Back normal. Wide seats open. Seats in the seats in the room. Good. Now, what will be different, and it has nothing to do with COVID, um, the upstairs of COB, we can't use that for meetings because we've cleaned out the basement to get rid of the mold and all the files are up there. One of the capital items at town meeting is a new shelving system for that basement. So we won't move the files back out of the top floor of COB till if that gets approved at town meeting and the racks get uh, installed, then we'll move those files. In the meantime, also um, at town meeting is the revamp of the audio visual for this building in the next one for uh, public meeting, television, audio. So we'll see if we can take advantage of that room being offline for meetings to get that upgraded first, then shift over there and then do here. So for now, all the public meetings that are televised will still be here, but they'll be in person live people Good. so forth Good. after town meeting that would be nice yes okay what about the restrictions on the center office building the building has been uh we took advantage of the two weeks to do some uh do some additional work over there in terms of uh cleaning and restoration 
Uh, it has been deep cleaned as of last Friday. We are prepared to move back in tomorrow, barring any action tonight of the Board of Selectmen. Okay, any objection to that from the board? No. So I guess it's a go, Jeff. Thank you, I will let everybody know to report unless they have concerns. And as always, if they do have concerns, they can work out with me a remote uh, work at home arrangement as we've done for the past 15 months. Okay, next under all business, we have um, discussion of the equestrian park bylaw. Now this is not a discussion of the equestrian plan. It's just a discussion on the draft, final draft that we got, well, not final draft, the draft we got of the bylaw two weeks ago. And we had said we would look at it if we had any questions, anything we maybe wanted to add to it, we can give Jeff our input because this does go to the planning department. Okay, did anyone have anything to add to it or anything they didn't like about it? You know, honestly, Madam Chair, if I may, um, I, I have a hard time even processing it without knowing more about what's actually being planned. It's not. Well, Jamie, this is the first thing. Um, there'll be no plans if there's no bylaw. Well, I understand when, that, Madam Chair, but, the, but my point, my response to that would be that, you know, as they're presenting it and they're coming up with what the particular business model will be, what it'll look like in terms of execution, it's hard to it. say what would be, make sense to have uh, have in the bylaws. Uh, you know, I understand your point. It's a circular sort of conversation, but it, it's hard to have one in my head just where it's siloed. And granted, the, just because it's difficult for me doesn't mean <laughs> it's necessarily it for everybody. Jeff, Jeff, they were involved in in this to an extent, right? Uh, yeah, as the discussion right. happened, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it went, went between the applicant, the town, the town council, um, there was a lot of a lot of input, yep. um, but it is your bylaw. You are the sponsor, so if you want to see changes, you can get those to me. We'll review them with the applicant. Um, so, yeah, I'm sorry. I just want to ask Mary because she said, "Do we have any questions, or are we happy?" I forgot the wording that you use. Like, you know, are we happy with the bylaw? But um, it's clearly written, but. I had already voted against sponsoring this in, in a 4-1 vote. So I'm just say, stating that for the record. I mean, no, I'm looking at this bylaw. I don't, there's no one provision that I have difficulty understanding. It's not ambiguous, if that's your question. But do I support it? Then I'm still where I was before. Um, i not agreeing. I voted against the Board of Selectmen sponsoring the zoning change. And I'm just reiterating that. Um, so I, I'm sure we'll have another opportunity to when we actually we're not voting on this right now. This is a draft. I guess I. This what are we What are we discussing tonight? Well, whether this, we support this, it, Mary, or whether this, we have a question on it. No, Mary. This was a draft that we got two weeks ago, and right. we had said that you know if there were things we thought we needed to put in or things not clear enough, we would get that information back and. You know the proponents and in all involved with it could take those under consideration and we will eventually and it won't be two weeks because it's town meeting so it'll be our second meeting in june we should have a bylaw that we can vote to pass on to the planning board oh we're doing that before if i may madam chair we're doing that before we have public hearings on it here and perhaps I'm just confused about the process. The planning board would have the public hearing. Gotcha. On the bylaw. Okay. Now that's the what first the opportunity to really see it. Right. So you can read it, digest it, cogitate on it, and then get right. comments back to us, and okay. we can work through them. Yeah. I just, I mean, again, I, I will look at it, but I don't, I'll just state for the record again, I don't understand why it's not the planning board that is sponsoring a zoning change, why it's coming from the Board of Selectmen. And maybe that's what confused Jamie a little bit, because this, this isn't the typical 
way we rezone. It's typically the planning board that sponsors the zoning change, and then we look at it as opposed to the Board of Selectmen sponsoring the zoning change. So it is, it's, it is being done a little bit differently. I understand that the board wants to sponsor it, but typically it is the planning board that has done so in the past. Was that not the, for the Warren articles on the town meeting where, with us sponsoring it, didn't it give us the ability to open it up and close it when it, in regards to the town meeting warrant? Yes, and in, and in the process, the planning board generally comes up with zoning amendments, but then they send them to you to say, okay, go forth and have the hearing and do all those good things with it. So right. this is a very similar process, it's just that it hasn't really generated from the planning board it's been generated it's, by which is a big difference i'm just i mean well, i don't want to argue about this usually we we it, we get it and we refer it immediately to zoning and then zoning sponsors the the, the zoning change i'm just yeah. but mary we did the same thing with the earth removal that we wanted to clarify that was instigated by the board of selectmen and then we passed it on to the planning board. So it's not very common, but it does happen. Oh, it does happen. So it's not, it's atypical. Yeah, so we will, we will get, you know, read it over. Any questions, anything you'd like to add, get it to Jeff and we'll make a decision on it at a second meeting in June. Okay, any old business, Chase? I have no old, thank you. Mary? Um. I don't think so. Just move. I took notes, so I don't think so. But move on. <laughs> I just want. I just want to double check. I have no old Mary. Okay, Jamie. I have no old Mary. Thank you. Okay. Women, who's? I don't. I don't. You don't. No. Okay. Me. Okay. New business. We had uh, a few items that came in after the agenda was made. One was a $200 donation to the Council of Aging from Roberta Medell. Is there a motion to accept the donation? Uh, I'll make the motion to accept the donation of $200 um, with gratitude. Is there a second? Okay, discussion? All in favor? Okay, and next was the um, 18,500 HVAC study for the library. Robin, you wanna go over that one, please? Yes, um, several years uh, before I started, the library uh, started an investigation on their HVAC systems. Um, with a, another engineer. Um, I'm not aware of all the details of what happened there, but we have some remaining funds and we are looking um, to bring in Van Zelm engineers out of six engineers that I asked. They were the only respondent interested in this project for this fee um, to come in and look at the HVAC systems in the library and help us plan for our capital replacements. Uh, the preliminary report from 2017 said we could be looking at a you know, $290,000 replacement project, uh, but I don't think that system was favored at the time. So I'd like uh, another stab at it to, to add a wicked plan. Um, the rooftop is on its last leg, actually both of them are. Um, so we, we need a plan in place for that. This will get us there. Okay, any questions from the board? Would, it, would any portion okay. of this be qualified to for the COVID money that we're gonna receive and be able to use for ventilation? We can take a look at that. Yeah. I know this is planning, so it's the, the COVID money's more for actual installation, right? Not planning, but. Okay, any other questions? Okay, does somebody wanna make a motion then to approve the $18,500 HVAC study to be in zone engineering. Okay. 
I will make the motion to approve the HVAC engineering service contract as written. Okay, is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Thank you. Okay, next we have um, approval of manager for Heal, Sturbridge Inc. Trish, you've been waiting a while. Thank but you for bringing us to the agenda tonight. Um, we are working on opening this Friday, the 21st, and have been in touch with the chamber for a ribbon, ribbon cutting on uh, June the 25th, and then a grand opening on July 2nd. And we are fortunate enough to hire the former manager of Netta in Brookline, which is one of the largest dispensaries uh, in the state, Jonathan Layton, who's here. Uh, and I'll allow him to speak now. Um, love working with him. I'm so glad I found you and we were able to hire you. So take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Trish. I, I appreciate that great intro. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I've been working with Heal uh, for um, better part of a month now. Um, it's a great team. I'm so glad to you know be starting the next chapter of my life here in the, the Sturbridge community. Um, and look forward to being an active and supportive member of the community and growing and, and progressing alongside all of you. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? Now, Jeff, do we need to approve the manager? Um, the HCA, uh, the host community agreement reserves your right to. Uh, you did approve the manager for local routes, so for consistency purposes, I would say please do. Okay, somebody want to make that motion? The motion would be to approve Jonathan Layton. Is it Layton or Layton? Layton, right first time. As the uh, manager for Heal Sturbridge, Inc. I will so move. There you go. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, five to nothing. Okay, good luck. Thank you. For Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thanks. Have a great night. You too. It's still bright out there. <laughs> We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Two more yeah. items, Case, of additional yeah. agenda items, Madam Chair. Right. Um, the uh, extension of Walter White's temporary appointment to June 11th. Yes, we'd like to extend him one week uh, pending the return of Mr. Burlingame from leave. There any questions, comments? I have a question. Um, is this still part-time mm -hmm. hours? Yeah, part-time hours. Okay. He's been doing a lot of remote yep. work. Uh, I think they're catching up a little bit. Um, but yes, it would still be part-time. Appointed somebody interim. Okay, somebody want to make a motion then? I'll make a motion on the extension of the temporary appointment of Walter White as building inspector, zoning enforcement officer to June 11th, 2021. I'll oh, second. So second. Okay. Oh, Discussion? All in favor? D5 to nothing. Is that it, Jeff? One more. Um, Mr. Jackson of the D Department of Public Works is asking that Gary Griswold be approved for summer help seasonal at the rate of thirteen fifty per hour. He is a returning seasonal employee. Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, does somebody want to make that motion? I will move that we appoint Gary Griswold as a seasonal worker for the Department of Public Works for this summer. Second. Second. Yep, second. Yep, Chase. Second. <laughs> yep, Chase. Okay, discussion? All in favor? Okay, we're still under new business. Jamie, do you have any new business? Um, I do, it's similar to, um, it probably could have been brought up under Jeff's uh, comment about the Sturbridge Road project in Charlton. First, I'd like to thank you, Jeff, for following up with the state to get the comment period 
extended. Chase and I wrote a letter to uh, the Commonwealth um, expressing our concerns uh, about the scale of that project and the likely impact on traffic, because uh, basically Sturbridge would be getting all of the traffic, none of the benefit, and it'd really be a safety risk on Route 20. Uh, I also want to thank, and, and just to the rest of the board, we, we could, because the comment period didn't get extended up to this period, the open meeting law sort of prevented us from having a long, large, uh, larger conversation. But I also want to thank Ann Gobi and Todd Smola for um, stepping up and really uh, listening to everybody's concerns, because uh, this could be a, re a real issue depending on how this rolls out in the future. So I uh, appreciate everybody's work on it. Uh, Jamie, along those lines, too, um, Jean had written one letter earlier, and then she had written another very factual, um, informative letter this time, too. So she's been on top of it all along. Yep, thanks, Jean. Okay. Any other new business, Jamie? No, nothing else for me. Ian? Uh, yeah, it's been brought to our attention through a couple emails from people that there are signage in town which people don't agree with i said that i would bring it up tonight i feel they're protected by the first amendment and posting their signage um, but also in our bylaw in reviewing the bylaw and how it regards to um, political signage and when you should take it down and when you shouldn't and that's just it's been emailed to me and i said i would bring it up so now it's out there i respond to that um, resident as well it, it is very confusing to residents when we have a bylaw that we can't that we don't enforce um personally i would be i know we're not going to do it because we already discussed it but it is confusing to residents um when we have something on the books that's not enforceable and there are a lot of towns that are actually repealing it so that the confusion doesn't continue to you know fester because this resident is very upset and i i feel badly that her family has to see but it is a, it's a first amendment thing and you know at least the bylaw we should have you know some type of advice you know we advise you after six you know not after two weeks or whatever the election period is but it's not going to get held up i mean i forwarded to her what the mash chapter of the aclu says different towns have had it struck down and i for one think that we should just repeal that bylaw altogether no, I know we, we should really look into it um, because you really can't restrict length of time signs are up. But it's also been mentioned that this may not really be a political sign, even though it has candidates' names on it. There's nothing about vote or when an election is. Um, well, as far as the language on the other sign, I personally think it's a disgrace that anyone would have the audacity and the lack of common sense and decency to put a sign like that on their front fence. But we need to look into it because I know it is protected by the uh, First Amendment, so our hands are tied. I'll visit with Kay. the town planner about amending the bylaw. Yeah. I know the bylaw came about only because to make things easy for people. When can I put my signs up and when do they have to come down? Because there's always some signs that never get taken down, even when you pass through other um, towns and usually it's um, state positions. The signs are up for a year. Okay, but that would be good, Jeff, have a look at it. Okay, Ian, any other new business? Nope, that's all. Mary? No. Chase? I have no new, thank you. And I don't have any new business. Next we have correspondence. Uh, April 30th, 2021, uh, 2020 Tree City USA recognition letter from Dan Lamb, president of Arbor Day Foundation to Jeff Bridges. May 1st, 2021, the DIRT newsletter, newsletter from Josie, president of the Community Food Collaborative to Jeff Bridges. May 4th, 2021, Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission advisory regarding indoor singing performances and increased capacity at arenas, stadiums, and ballparks advisory from Ryan Melville 
Deputy Executive Director of the Massachusetts Alcohol Beverage Control Commission to Jeff Bridges. May 4th, 2021, Charter Communications 2020 Annual Financial Report, letter from John Maher, Director of Government Affairs to Jeff Bridges. May 4th, 2021, Charter Communication Pricing Changes, letter from John Maher, Director of Government Affairs to Jeff Bridges. May 4th, 2021, Charter Communications Upcoming Changes, letter from John Maher, Director of Government Affairs to Jeff Bridges. May 10th, 2021, notification to Abutters RV Management Services, notification from the Sturbridge Conservation Commission to Jeff Bridges. May 10th, 2021, Tri-Valley Inc. Crisis Intervention Program, letter from Elizabeth Prince, Director, Executive Director of Tri-Valley Inc. to the Board of Selectmen. May 11th, 2021, Charter Communications Upcoming Changes, letter from John Maher, Director of Government Affairs to Jeff Bridges. May 11, 2021, Trails Volunteer Log and tra Trail Traffic Analysis, email from Thomas Chamberlain to Jeff Bridges. May 12, 2021, National Grid Yearly Operational Plan, letter from Mary Claire Rigby, Lead Vegetation Strategy Specialist to Mary Blanchard. May 12, 2021, Distribution Center being built at 241 Sturbridge Road in Charlton, Letter to Eve, Eva Murray, MEPA office from Jamie Goodwin and Chase Kabinsky. Okay, any other correspondence? Nope. No. Okay, so then we have approval of minutes of the May 3rd meeting. Does anybody have any corrections? I have just a couple. Um, on page, sorry, on page 447, um, second paragraph under old business, the second sentence says, Vice Chair Dowling said as a resident she would be upset that she was not aware that the building, insert, she was not made aware by the town that the building was closed. Um, insert, made aware by the town. Um, and in the first paragraph, third line under COVID-19 update, scratch, and to open by appointment only. So I didn't want it. And then on page 448, first sentence, she does not support in-person appointments at all during this scratch concern and insert two-week time period. And then I could be wrong, but I think clinic, no cute, just C L I N I C. Um, there's a couple of references to the Johnson and Johnson Clinic in the second paragraph. Yeah, that's Johnson and Johnson. Clinic. Oh, that's how they spell it? No, no, no. That's Clinique. That's Clinique, like, yeah, yeah, that's their, that's that's their product. It's the makeup. <laughs> Alex must use it. That's why I should put it in. <laughs> I just so it's, too, it's what they're doing with the vaccine now. There's a there's a couple of references to Clinique, so that's it. <laughs> sorry, I missed that one, Alex. Uh, it's okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no biggie. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Is there a motion then to approve the minutes as amended? I move to approve the minutes as amended. I'll second the motion. Okay. okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Okay, next we have public access. Good evening. Is there anyone on the public line that would like to address the Board of Selectmen? Good evening. Is there anyone on the public line that would like to address the Board of Selectmen? There was someone there earlier. Um, no one's on the line, Madam Chair. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn, please? I, hear, I move to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs> oh, uh, you got to set your date, time, and place for your special meeting before pub before the town meeting, right? Do you have to? You want to set? Yeah, we usually. We usually just do it at 6.30 in the library. Okay. At the high school. 
are we going to have a policy on mask wearing distancing i just know the question is going to come up from people you know are we just going to follow the state guidance and that, that'll be we're going to follow the state guidance okay. yep yep i just know if someone's, and again if someone's going to ask still want to wear masks they can yep um but whatever the guidance is we'll work with the health department on that roger that okay so we did have a motion do we have a second then to adjourn i'll second that <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so enthused. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Thank you all. Thank you very much. There's a lot of business tonight, but uh, good stuff. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, yeah, we didn't do too bad on the time. Nope.